Hey guys, this is Heath. Figured I'd show you a quick uh, glimpse at this 1969 copy of Arcology, City and the Image of Man, and I've added a few things for scale. One being a yardstick, and a couple being a couple of DVDs, actually a PS3 game and a DVD. So this thing's uh, pretty huge. I can't remember exactly how big the 2006 edition is. Um, Looks like this is 24 and a half inches across. Essentially, it's it's you know it's their drafting pages, and I'll flip through just a few. It, uh, you have to be a little gentle with it, as you can see. There's the binding. This one's in pretty awesome shape for a <clears throat> first edition. Uh, but yeah, you know when you flip the pages, you have to be a little careful. Let's see if I can get into the heart of the matter. There's some um, exposition um, covering the concept. And then covering the different designs, um, there's, you know, he, he's basically interested in the way we use material and the ways we built. Obviously, we are not building arcologies, so, you know, his, his theories are, I mean, there are other things going on. But <clears throat> as far as, uh, you know, urban theory goes, it's pretty interesting. And it, as an architect and as a draftsperson, it's actually pretty awesome to see his, you know, far-out diagrams of of what goes into making buildings and and you know his ideas about excavating in one place and using the material excavated below grade to to create the larger structure so anyway I'm gonna go ahead a few ways to try and get you a glimpse of some of the renderings because they're unbelievable and I'll just pan over again for scale hand page DVD page and renderings so this stuff is um uh, to focus a little bit. This stuff is pretty amazing and you know, pretty kind of utopian. But George Lucas at the time was really interested in this as a model for um some of the cities and settlements that he came up with for Star Wars. My my belief is that uh Celery was probably, you know, 100 years ahead of his time. And it'll it'll happen as we, as the need for habitats grows. But you know, it's a completely different way of building, so not easily done, um, but hugely inspiring. You know, uh, for scale actually. So meanwhile, for scale in terms of these structures, here's you know the Empire State Building, and here's his structure. He does that throughout. He also has like um, population six million <laughs> for this particular structure. So he lays out different possible scenarios. There are cutaways. Um, sorry that I'm jumping around so much. Let's see if you know if I can find some good ones here. Some of the pages are sort of lengthwise to get a sense of massive scale. It does open up possibilities. Like <laughs> it would actually be pretty cool if uh, you know the vessel open framework. Like if if a book could eventually be created that had sort of this level of draftsmanship to it, except done with, um, you know, with vector tools and draftsman's tools and good 3D renderings and stuff. Almost like as if Mike Okuda, the designer of the Enterprise D, made a, you know, book about, about uh, <laughs> habitats on Earth. It would be pretty awesome. Um, so this is Arcology, City and the Image of Man. And, you know, in addition to how inspiring and information-rich the content is, it's just a really important reference point in the history of architecture, and I think it's even possible that if his, his designs, if the book had been a little less unwieldy, you never know, we might just have archaeologies today. Um, there's one site, by the way, this should look a little familiar, it's almost shaped like the Enterprise D saucer section. It's craziness. I'm a geek. We're all geeks here. It's all, it's all good. Um, there's a site called Arcosanti, which is really, honestly, you know, more of a commune at this point. But he did live and work there and did build uh, some structures there. So it's, you know, it's an interesting reference point. It kind of looks like a sprawling 70s sci-fi movie set in a way, like a Star, Star Wars set. Uh, Arco Santi is that, if you ever want to look it up. He eventually gets into ideas like, this is one built into a dam, I believe. So building very large earthworks... As, as a way to go about things, building in many different types of settings. Um, 
you know, it's a strategy. And in a similar way, devoting a habitat like this to the strategy of uh, preserving, you know, the traces of nature, culture, and science is, is likewise a strategy that can be scaled and applied at any scale. And that's kind of the idea. So, this is arcology. This is actually a good example to zoom in <laughs> at some of the greebles that he, you know, sketched in there. I mean, this was 1969, right? So he's sitting there working on his, his the beginning of his life's work and just sort of sketching away all these little tiny corridors. But, I mean, you know, the images, I mean, the scan would be gargantuan, obviously. So there's... There's a lot here that we can do faster with generative tools today, and it would be amazing to be able to try. Um, this is interesting. I tried to focus on the page. That's pretty funny. Kind of interesting shape there. I'd forgotten that shape. Uh, but, you know, um, archetypes are everywhere. If, I think there's one. I won't find it in time, and this is getting long. I'm sorry it's so long. Um, there's one on an asteroid, so he does eventually go into the idea that, indeed, these could be, that's Arcosanti actually, and these, these could be um, launched, these could be used as modules, um, you know, there's the asteroid one. You know, a lot of things are possible when you start to think outside the box and think of building as a whole system. And architect Rachel Armstrong, who's worked a bit with Icarus, a lot with Icarus Interstellar, and who I've talked to at Starship Congress, has a whole different approach having to do with... Um, synthetic biology for building components and it opens up whole new doors but all of these approaches are compatible and certainly for designs I think that arcology is hugely inspiring and I hope you've inspired, been inspired too to maybe consider getting one of the less expensive copies or even a poor condition copy of the 1969 because it's uh, a beauty and I'll tell you a secret if you set up a filter on um, A Libris and just wait, it sends you when they post, and I actually managed to grab this guy for just a hundred bucks at one point. I had to wait a while. But um, good luck. It's great working with you guys. It's really fun so far. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.